we are going to start electrostat but before electrostats let's understand what are the basics element of an atom good morning students today we are going to start electrostats so we are going to start electrostat but before electrostats let's understand what are the basics element of an atom we have this nucleus inside an atom everyone knows what is a nucleus and we have some electrons revolving around the nucleus and these are the orbits these are the orbits these are the orbits along which electron revolves all right these are the orbits along which electron revolves so we are going to talk about these electrons and the protons these are the fundamental charges these are the fundamental charges so let's start the electrostats these are the fundamental charges all right let's start the electrostats now about the charge we are going to study about the charge that is static static means what is the meaning of static static is basically means at rest that means we are going to study about everything about the charge at rest clear we are going to study everything about charge at rest so there are two topics in today's class that we are going to study the first is type of charges and their important data the first is type of charges and their important data so what is this this is like what is charge what is the the minimum quantity of charge if there is a minimum quantity who acquires it what is the mass of a minimum quantity charge these type of things that we are going to discuss and the second thing is charge property and the second thing is charge property charge properties or you can say properties of charge so this is these are the two topics that we are going to cover in today's class clear now let's start about let's start from the first thing that is electric charge at rest that is electric charge at rest but the first thing is what is charge what is charge we have studied in gravitation what is mass mass is a fundamental quantity we already studied in gravitation clear now what is this mass we will be discussing what will be this? what is this charge all right so charge is nothing charge is a property of matter just like mass is the property of matter in the same way charge is also the property of matter clear charge is also the property of matter but where does it use
actually it is that type of property by which it can it can by it i mean body the body that possess charge it can experience experience what electro magnetic effect clear by which it can experience electromagnetic effect or field clear so this is the basic definition of charge now how does a body obtain charge there is a body and someone says the body is having charge where did it come from and how did it come we are going to discuss the next part is how the charge how a body obtains any charge let's talk about this how a body obtain any charge the second thing is how a body obtain any charge the main question is how does a body obtain charge all right so let me explain something first of all try this try to understand what am i going to say is see we are having an atom and in this atom there is the outermost shell and we all know that matter a body is made up of electron sorry a body is made up of atoms and atoms have electrons clear let us suppose this is the atom of body 1 atom of body 1 body a you can assume and let us say we have another body here let us say we have another body here and we have the electron in this body too let us say this is having a one electron in the outermost shell and it is having the let us say five electrons in the outermost shell clear so what just happens what if we just this atom a just give its outermost electron to body b what will happen in that case in that case the outermost shell of this atom will have a vacancy and the b atom will be having six electrons clear this will have no electron and this atom will have six electron in its valence bond now if we assume let us suppose in this case number of electrons were equal to number of protons okay sir and here is also number of electrons were equal to number of protons all right all right all right all right so the atom were basically neutral in this state but when this atom gave one electron to this atom now the number of proton become higher than the number of electron so the net charge in this atom 
becomes positive becomes positive that is why this atom is positively charged and what about that here in the similar way here number of electron becomes greater than the number of not much greater just one greater number of proton that is why this as a whole atom has been charged negatively understand how the charge transfer occurs how does a body how does a body obtain any charge this was at atomic level this was at atomic level now we are going to talk about mass level this was at atomic level now we are going to talk about mass level clear now we are going to talk about mass level clear now we are going to talk about mass level so let us assume this is a body let us say this is a neutral body neutral body in this neutral body if we just remove an electron if we just remove an electron from this body then we will be having a body we will be having a body which is positively charged if we remove electrons if we remove electrons what will happen the num at initial state at initial state here number of electron were equal to number of proton okay sir but after removing the electrons after removing the electrons what just happened number of electron become less than the number of proton and if number of proton is greater which means the body is positively charged first thing is clear how can we charge the body by positive charge it is not just you know if this is a neutral body if someone says give it a positive charge you can't give positive charge to a body but you can remove electrons so by removing the electrons you can say that now the body is positively charged clear that is why the second case is now the second case is now the second case is what we are doing we are adding electrons we are adding electrons now in second case if we are adding the electrons what we are doing we are just increasing the number of electrons in the neutral body by increasing the number of electrons in the neutral body we can say that number of electrons is now greater than number of protons simple as that isn't it simple as that so here now this body is negatively charged clear i hope you understand clear this is the thing all right now one more thing if it is a positively charged we have removed the electron so now we can say electron deficient deficient means deficiency deficiency we have created the deficiency of electron in this body and here electron efficiency efficiency means there are excess of electrons in the body clear efficiency means excess of electron deficiency means less electron number of electron has been reduced that's why 
now let's uh, talk about something it is not in the syllabus but just for the knowledge okay so just for the sake of knowledge see recently scientists have discovered another sub nuclear particle sub atomic particle see we have atoms so what are sub atomic particles sub atomic particles are electron proton neutron alpha particle etc isn't it okay but what is sub nucleus particle sub nucleus particle are what nucleus means nucleus means by what the nucleus is made up of it is made up of proton and neutron okay but when we talk about sub when we talk about sub nucleus point sub nucleus particle we are going much deeper now atom is made up of proton neutron electron but what about the proton and neutron what are they made up of so the recent and modern theory has concluded that there are quarks it is not in your syllabus but just for information don't be so serious in the uh, don't be you know serious in this uh, quark topic but just for your information that these quarks have even much smaller charge these quarks have much smaller charge so for the information just remember these quarks have much smaller charge then an electron or a proton but they can't exist but they can't exist independently they can't exist independently they can't exist independently means they can't exist single singly particle a singular particle so they can't exist sing singularly so they exist in pair okay they exist in pair the other thing is they exist in pair so what is this let me explain quark have two type up quark and down quark so what is this up quark and down quark it is just another see up quark up quark is what up quark is the sub nuclei particle that consist the charge of plus minus e by 3 what is e we will be explaining e is nothing but charge on electron charge on a an electron clear e is nothing but the charge on an electron so what is up quark it consists of a as a small charge as e by 3 what is down quark down quark is also a quark which consists of a charge of a magnitude 2 e by 3 but they cannot exist independently they cannot exist independently that is why we say independently that is why they are not to be considered as the smallest charge particle carrier they cannot be said as the smallest charge particle carrier charge carrier means something that carry charges 
something that carry charges now let's talk about something else let's talk about something else what is it smallest charge smallest charge in the real life forget about quarks quark is not in your syllabus i have just informed something just for the information but the real thing is smallest charge now what is the smallest charge it is not none other than charge on an electron it is none other than charge on an electron how much charge does an electron consist how much charge does an electron consist charge on an electron okay the charge on an electron is qe you can also write it e but qe is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb coulomb what is coulomb coulomb is the charge unit coulomb is the unit of charge like the unit of mass is kg so we can say si unit of charge is coulomb denoted by capital c clear si unit of charge is coulomb denoted by capital c and the smallest charge that can exist in the nature is charge on an electron clear this is one of the most important thing that you need to remember that the charge cannot be less than e charge cannot be less than the magnitude of e clear okay now let's talk about something uh, more that is mass of an electron what is the mass of an electron if electron is a matter if electron is a matter and matter is made up of electrons and protons and neutrons then it must consist some charge yes but it must also consist of mass what is the mass of an electron it is so minor so small as 1 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg but it is it is such a small quantity that sometimes we also neglect it in further chapters but for now remember this value of mass of an electron clear now we are going further what are the type of charges what are the type of charges let us see what are the type of charges type of charges what are the type of charges we have just two type of charges first is positive and second is negative all right first is positive second is negative first is positive charge positive charge but who consisted positive charge has been consisted by proton and proton exist in nucleus nucleus yes every nucleus of an atom consists positive charge that is why due to the location of the proton 
ड्यू टू द लोकेशन ऑफ द प्रोटोन वी कैन नॉट ट्रांसफर पॉजिटिव चार्ज फ्रॉम वन बॉडी टू अन अदर बॉडी वी कैन नॉट जस्ट यू नो टेक आउट न्यूक्लियस फ्रॉम द एटम दैट इज वाई ओनली इलेक्ट्रॉन कैन बी ट्रांसफर बिकॉज दे आर प्रेजेंट इन द आउटर शेल दे आर फोर ओनली इलेक्ट्रॉन्स कैन बी ट्रांसफर्ड फ्रॉम वन मैटर टू अनदर वी कैन नॉट जस्ट रिमूव न्यूक्लियस इट इज रॉन्ग इट इज एब्सोल्यूटली रॉन्ग वी कैन नॉट जस्ट रिमूव द न्यूक्लियस फ्रॉम द एटम दैट इज वाई इफ वी आर सेंग द बॉडी इज पॉजिटिवली चार्ज इफ वी आर सेंग एनी बॉडी इज पॉजिटिवली चार्ज इट मीन्स इलेक्ट्रॉन हैव बीन रिमूव If any body is positively charged, it must mean that electron has been removed from the body. Clear? Mark it. Now, what we are going to study is something basic. Third thing. Third thing is what, sir? A neutral body. A neutral body. this is the one of the most confusing thing if we say is there any charge present on the neutral body we have this neutral body let us suppose we are making this neutral body and if i say tell me is there any charge present in this body question mark so what will be your answer state your answer what will be your answer if someone ask what are the charges does any a neutral body consist charge let me explain let me explain see if this is a body it must have atoms if it is a body it must have atoms and if it is having atoms if it is a body it must have atoms and if it is having atoms then it must have electrons and protons then why is this neutral body in a neutral body in a neutral body in a neutral body you can say number of electrons are always equals to number of protons number of electrons are always equals to number of protons that is why we say the net charge that is why we say the net charge is equals to zero we do not say anything else we just the net charge is equals to zero net charge means by adding both the charges by adding both both the charges understand what is a neutral body here what is a neutral body here clear all right now i think you understand it so now we are going to talk about something more that is units we have talked about unit now what is the dimension of charge all right what is the dimension of charge we are going to talk about what is the dimension of charge dimension of charge what is the dimension of charge as you all have studied in the unit and dimension first chapter of physics that there are seven fundamental quantities how many seven fundamental quantities in which there was one quantity there was one quantity that was associated with the charge 
that was associated with the charge remember which quantity was it it was current it was current and we all know that what is the formula of current it is charge per unit time now we know time is a fundamental quantity time is a fundamental quantity current is a fundamental quantity and fundamental quantity have their own definition of dimension so by this we can say that charge is equals to current into time we can say charge is equals to current into time yeah obviously charge is equals to current into time so let's talk about dimension dimension of charge charge is being represented by charge is being represented by q charge is being represented by q so we will say that dimension they are dimensional brackets they are the brackets this is the dimension of charge what is the dimension of charge what will be the dimension of current what will be the dimension of current we know that the dimension of current is ampere a it's not ampere ampere is the unit a what is the time it has been t so we are getting the dimension of charges a ki power 1 and t is to the power 1 so this is the dimension of charge and it is very important you can mark it clear i think everything is clear okay now what next what is next the next thing is yeah one more thing as you all know as you all know SI unit of charge is coulomb all right but what is it is SI unit okay 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 what is CGS unit of charge what is CGS unit of charge if you don't know just listen cgs is centimeter gram second cgs is centimeter gram second and this si means in mks system what do you mean by mks mks means mass kg second so if we are saying si unit CG, CGS unit of charge it is been called as electrostatic unit represented by E uh, wait a second represented by ESU for your information just remember that cgs unit of charge is electrostatic unit short form esu clear short form is esu now if we are talking about the value of esu what is the value of esu how much esu is equals to how much coulomb if we are talking about quantity let us say 1 kg is equals to 1000 gram kg is a quantity gram is a quantity both are the quantity of masses we say 1 kilometer is equals to 100 meters sorry 1000 meters 
वन मीटर इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड सेंटीमीटर किलोमीटर सेंटीमीटर एंड मीटर्स दे आर ऑल द्वानिटी ऑफ लेंथ ऑल द यूनिट्स ऑफ लेंथ सो वॉट इज द वॉट इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन ई एस यू एंड कूलम वॉट इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन ई एस यू एंड कूलम सो रिमेंबर दैट थ्री इंटू टेन टू द पावर नाइन इज इक्वल टू वन कूलम रिमेंबर दिस डेटा फॉर योर इंफॉर्मेशन रिमेंबर दिस डेटा फॉर योर इंफॉर्मेशन दैट वन कूलम इज इक्वल टू थ्री इंटू टेन टू दावर नाइन ई एस यू क्लियर और राइट नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ चार्जेस नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ चार्जेस इट वॉन्ट बी दिन आउट अब इट इट वॉन्ट बी जूम आउट सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट समथिंग एल्स this is the one of the most important thing that is property of charges properties of charges what are the properties of charges fundamental properties of charges first thing is the first property is that charge is a स्केलर क्वांटिटी चार्ज इज अ स्केलर क्वांटिटी व्हाट इज अ स्केलर क्वांटिटी बाय डेफिनेशन स्क्वायर स्केलर क्वांटिटी कैन बी एडेड डायरेक्टली and by directly i mean magnitude can be added magnitude can be added directly what do you mean by magnitude can be added directly sir what is the meaning of magnitude can be added directly listen if we have let's suppose three coulomb charge and we are having two coulomb charge and this is going this way and this is going this way and after some time they both collide and form a single charge after some time they both collide and form a single charge so what will be the magnitude of this combined charge combined charge what will be the magnitude of combined charge it will be nothing but simply 5 coulomb which is equals to 3 coulomb plus 2 coulomb as these both charges isn't it as these two charges now similarly by scalar we mean that charges can be added directly like q total total charge on a body is equals to q1 plus q2 plus q3 the main difference between scalar and a vector quantity is that the vector quantity cannot be added directly but there is involvement of angle there is involvement of angle in the addition of a vector but in scalar we directly add the quantity regardless whether it is moving in different direction like these two charges they are moving the three coulomb is moving downward two coulomb is moving upward but when they collide they form single charge of the magnitude which can be achieved by directly adding these two charges clear which can be achieved by directly adding these two charges so this is the first property of charge that charge is a 
स्केलर क्वांटिटी क्लियर चार्ज वेदर चार्ज इज मूविंग और एट रेस्ट बट वेन वी एड टू चार्जेस दे मस्ट बी इक्वल टू द सम ऑफ द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ इंडिविजुअल चार्जेस क्लियर ओके अदर थिंग इज नाउ द अदर थिंग इज चार्ज इज ट्रांसफरेबल चार्ज इज ट्रांसफरेबल चार्ज इज ट्रांसफरेबल एंड कंजर्वेटिव वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ कंजर्वेटिव चार्ज इज ट्रांसफरेबल एंड कंजर्वेटिव वाओ चार्ज इज चार्ज इज कंजर्वेटिव एंड ट्रांसफरेबल ऑल्सो ओके सर ओके लेट मी एक्सप्लेन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल जस्ट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉट ट्रांसफर ऑफ चार्ज अर्लियर इन दिस लेक्चर आई हैव टोल्ड यू हाउ कैन अ चार्ज बी ट्रांसफर्ड बाय रिमूविंग और गेनिंग द इलेक्ट्रॉन फ्रॉम वन बॉडी टू अनदर बॉडी सो लेट अस सपोज वी आर हैविंग अ सिस्टम लेट अस सपोज वी आर हैविंग अ सिस्टम so in this system let us suppose we have two bodies one body is of let us suppose having 15 coulomb another body is of we can say minus 7 coulomb okay sir okay clear transferable means transferable means we can transfer one electron or we can transfer charge let us suppose we have transferred one coulomb charge to seven coulomb in this after this process after this process we will be having a sphere 15 coulomb will be becoming 14 coulomb by removing one coulomb charge and this minus 7 coulomb will become minus 6 coulomb by taking one coulomb charge clear ah uh, one more thing please don't forget it we are not transferring positive charge from 15 coulomb to minus 7 coulomb we are transferring minus 1 coulomb charge from minus 7 to 15 that is why it is just the representation that shows 1 coulomb charge is been transferred from 15 to minus 7 but in reality positive charge cannot be transferred so in reality electron is being transferred from minus 7 to plus 15 clear but it is just a representation that plus coulomb charge is giving from 15 coulomb to minus 7 coulomb clear so after the process it will become this so this is the transfer of charge this is the transfer of charge what is charge conservation see initially initially net charge in this box was how much 8 coulomb plus 8 coulomb but it is isolated it is isolated which means nothing can go inside and nothing can came from outside all right nothing can go inside and nothing can come outside from this box it is isolated so if the box is isolated if the box is isolated we can say that charge inside the box total charge or net charge inside the box can never change this is the conservation of charge the charge can neither be destroyed nor be created same as the mass same as the conservation of mass so here if we think 14 minus 6 14 plus minus 6 how much is it 
8 coulomb and it is the final charge so initial was 8 coulomb but we have transferred the charge now final coulomb is final charge is also 8 coulomb this shows that q initial were and is is equals to q final and this implies conservative nature of charge clear i think everyone get it i think everyone get it okay mark kari just mark it and we will be discussing another property of charge another property of charge is charge is associated with mass charge is associated with mass charge is associated with mass what is the meaning of this this means that with that just let's talk about definition first this indicates that charge can never charge can never exist without mass which okay 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 charge can never exist without mass what about mass mass can exist without charge mass can exist without charge but charge can never exist without mass what let me explain let me explain first of all talk about mass sorry first of all talk about mass 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 means it can be a neutral body also if mass is neutral it will be having q is equals to 0 it will be having q is equals to 0 what what about charge what about this charge what about this charge what about this charge let me explain charge means charge means let us suppose we are having two bodies we are having two bodies and in this there are several electrons all right and we are transferring one electron from body a to body b after this process after this process what will happen after this process the mass a will be positively charged and the mass b will be negatively charged all right so here we can say that there is transfer of electron there is transfer of electron but if it is a positive charge it must have excess it must have excess number of protons excess number of protons but mass can never be negative in this case mass can never be negative in this case which means the total number of the total mass of this body will be number of protons into weight of proton plus number of electrons into weight of electron it must be positive 
we are adding the mass of electrons and protons in similar way here also number of total number of protons into weight of proton plus total number of electrons into weight of electrons clear this is the first way to understand the association of mass with the charge clear the association of mass with the charge now a very simple a very simple method is like if electron carries charge if electron carries charge and electron also have its mass me and charge cannot be smaller and charge cannot be smaller which means can be greater than or equals to e so if the smallest charge is e and e is having mass which automatically derives that if a body is having even the minimum charge will also have mass which means that electron have mass and without electron there is no charge transfer possible that is why mass can exist without charge by being neutral but charge cannot exist without mass if there is charge which means there is matter and if there is matter there must be mass matter cannot exist without mass matter cannot exist without mass simple as that now let's talk about other property that is quantization of charge that is quantization of charge i think you understand this i will just remove just erase it so the next thing is quantization of charge the quantization of charge means the quantization of charge yes what is the quantization of charge the quantization of charge means that charge can exist in a sub in a fixed quantity in a fixed quantity let us suppose we are having a body a we are having a body b and we need to transfer some charge if we will transfer one electron from here to here the body this body will be having a plus e charge isn't it and this body will be charged by minus e clear now in second stage let us suppose we are transferring one more electron then they, this body will be again to e charged this body will be minus to e charged clear so what if someone says i want a charge of 2.5 e i want a charge of 2.5 e charge can be the smallest unit of charge is e but what about this this charge is greater than e this charge is greater than e but is it possible to exist it is possible to exist in a body let's see for this condition you have to you have to cut an electron into half you have to cut an electron into half and this process is impossible and this process is impossible we can never cut a electron into half that is why that is why 
दिस प्रोसेस इज नॉट पॉसिबल इन एनी वे दिस प्रोसेस कैन नेवर बी पॉसिबल दिस प्रोसेस कैन नेवर बी पॉसिबल दिस इज पॉसिबल दिस इज पॉसिबल दिस इज एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो पॉसिबल बट दिस कंडीशन इज नॉट पॉसिबल इम्पॉसिबल वाई बिकॉज वी कैन नॉट कट इलेक्ट्रॉन इन टू फ्रैक्शंस वी कैन नॉट कट इलेक्ट्रॉन इन टू फ्रैक्शंस सो कैन वी हैव ट्वेंटी सेवन इलेक्ट्रॉन चार्ज यस कैन वी हैव माइनस ट्वेंटी नाइन इलेक्ट्रॉन चार्ज यस कैन वी हैव प्लस फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन चार्ज कैन वी हैव प्लस फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन चार्ज never have a pi electron charge we can have this we can have this but we cannot have this can we have i think you understand can we have uh let us suppose 29.3 e no we cannot we cannot but these are we can have so by this by this experiment by this theory we can say that charge can exist in the term of n times e where where n is integer where n is integer and the range of n can be exist minus infinity to infinity clear that is that clear or we can say q is equals to plus minus any where n will be existing from 0 to infinity clear i think you get it so okay and the second thing is minimum value of minimum value of e is minimum sorry minimum value of charge minimum value of charge of charge is equals to e which is equals to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb sorry about that 19 coulomb let me let me write it down there let me write it down more clearly value of charge is equals to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb c write it down the whole thing and we are going to move forward now we are talking about something which is called okay i think the time is over so we have discussed four properties of charge but there are three properties remains in this lecture so we are going to talk about in our next lectures we are going to talk about it in our next lecture so very very thank you guys thank you guys for listening the lectures and uh, after this lecture i am going to post another lecture we will be starting from the three property of the charge that are remaining today thank you very much and have a nice day